Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Wee Knives Synergy 2 Integral. What does integral mean? It means the uh, handle skills are all one piece of titanium. This entire frame was milled from a single block of titanium. Let's talk about integrals real quick before we get into the normal review here. This knife factually, the integrals factually cost more money to make then let's pretend this was the exact same design, but with two pieces of titanium and uh, standoffs or a backspacer between. Uh, the amount of precision work that has to be done, especially considering we're looking at contoured 3D milled titanium scales, the amount of precision work that has to be done to make sure that the uh, scales are exactly right and um, will accept the bearings and the blade and that everything centers up correctly and that it has good action, that is much harder to do. So if you go and look at the price of this knife, right, which by the way, this will be linked right down in the description. It has many different forms, a couple different blade shapes, right? You go and look at this and you're like, oh my gosh, that's an expensive Wii knife, right? That's because it doesn't really matter that it's made out of the same materials as other Wii knives or other knives of the same, you know, caliber, right? It simply costs more to make. It's okay if this integral thing isn't your cup of tea, but it, it, it's uh, it factually costs more to make. It's it's just going to be a more expensive knife, right? I'm aware, you know, other companies making some integral knives for less money, um, but I've handled a lot of that stuff. And the reason there are lots of reviews, you know, that could have come to fruition that didn't because of stuff that I handled and just absolutely hated, even if it was made with really good materials or in some cases was actually an integral and cost substantially less because in those situations I found that, ah, here's where they cut corners. That's why this thing costs so much less because it's garbage, right? So the reason I'm telling you this is because We Knives is known for consistent quality machine work and manufacturing. They're also known for consistent uh, heat treats, right? So you're gonna get all that, and on top of that, you're getting an integral. Again, to cap this all off, what I'm saying is, is this is really not a bad price for an integral, honestly. Compared to the other really high-end stuff that's out there, it's really not a bad price. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if you disagree, that's completely fine. That's just my opinion. Anyways, this was sent to me by my buddy Tom. Tom has sent things to the channel before, so I really appreciate you, Tom. Thanks so much for letting me take a look. Also, thanks so much to my generous patrons for supporting me right now. If you're enjoying the, the uh, daily knife content on this channel and if you'd like to help support me, then you can find my uh, Patreon link right down in the description. Get your hands on some stickers and stuff. Your support would mean the world to me. And please follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. All right, let's go ahead and get a measurement here of the Wii Synergy 2. Synergy 2 coming in at eight and a quarter, blade length coming in at exactly three and a half inches, and your cutting edge coming in exactly three and a quarter. That's nice, that's a sweet spot for me, so I really appreciate that. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. Ontario Rat Model 1 coming in at 8.6 inches overall. We're at an angle here, so it doesn't look like there's much of a difference, but there is. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. Again, it looks like it's actually shorter, it's not. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Ritter Hogue coming in at eight inches overall. How about up against the Spyderco P uh, Para 3? Para 3 coming in at seven and a quarter inches overall. And last but not least, the, where is it? <laughs> is it? Is it gone? There it is. Uh, the uh, Benchmade Mini Griptilian coming in at 6.75 inches overall. How's the action of this guy? It's pretty good. This is running on floating bearings. Feels very similar to other Wii knives that I've handled. It takes a little bit of encouragement to come back down, but it's honestly very smooth. Uh, this isn't what I'd call a gritty action. It's very, very smooth. Um, and considering the extra complications that they have to work with to get the um, bearings fitted into an integral frame, and the blade and have everything working perfectly the tolerance is right honestly uh, all i'm concerned with is the fact that i can easily uh disengage the uh, frame lock uh and put the blade back in smoothly and if i really wanted to you know you can absolutely just give this a shake and it'll come down and the action is nice and snappy really really good i don't have a problem with that it does not need to be full shut in fact i've said this many times actually prefer a more controlled action over a completely and totally fall shut action. My fingers 
uh, have uh, old scars from completely and totally fall shut action. Um, so it's a preference thing. But I think in this uh, territory, it's completely acceptable, and I'm happy with it. Um, let's go ahead and talk about carry profile. So thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. This is a bit thicker. Um, but sorry, we're having focusing issues. Here are the knives camera right here. This is what we're looking at. Thank you for focusing on my background. Not the, uh, not the point, not the, the topic right now. Um, but anyways, it is a little bit thicker, but these are contoured and completely and totally, you know, uh, 3d milled. That's really cool. I'll take a little bit of extra, extra thickness if I can get that contouring. And so I appreciate that length and height up against two knives with awkward carry profiles that nobody ever complains about the pm2 and para 3 lengthwise it's a little tiny bit shorter than the pm2 uh, definitely longer than the para 3 height wise nowhere near as tall as the max maximum uh, points of height on either the pm2 or para 3 so that's nice this is going to be a little bit heavier than other knives with a similar profile because it is one solid you know they didn't they can't really mill i don't think they can there's really a way for them to mill the inside of the titanium, right? So it's not super thick titanium, but it is going to be a little bit heavier than normal. We'll talk about that here in a sec. How about blade stock thickness? Let's go ahead and measure that here real quick. Uh, come on now. Blade stock thickness on this guy is coming in at 123, probably 125 thousandths. I think that's pretty typical for wheat. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, let's go ahead and weigh it here real quick so you guys know what you're looking at. We are looking at uh, eight and a quarter inches overall. Not bad. 4.94 ounces. Not bad at all. I got full titanium hinders that definitely weigh more than that. I'll give you guys an example right now of my XM18 workhorse that is full titanium, not milled, not an integral, right? This is a bigger, thicker knife. Same length. Coming in at 6.35 inches. I'm um, sorry, ounces overall. Um, still going to be fairly heavy for some people, but I, honestly, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. It's, it's pretty good for an, uh, an integral integral. I, I say it both ways because I just, I don't know. I, uh, I always say integral. My wife always corrects me. Integral, integral, whatever. <laughs> I don't say shaman correctly either or, um, or, uh, Truidon. <laughs> I've been doing that for years. Anyways. Um, yeah, I don't think the weight's bad, but it definitely is going to be too big and too heavy for some people to carry. I completely understand that. If you've been carrying larger knives, right, and you wear jeans every day, this isn't going to be a big deal. If you wear uh, fitted slacks, right, skinny jeans, things like that, um, or you're used to carrying smaller knives, it's probably not going to be your thing. That's totally understandable. It just depends on your perspective. Also, if you live in an area that does not allow blades over three inches or whatever the law is, and this is going to be legally, um, too big for your area, right? Or it's gonna, it's gonna be illegal to carry in your area. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check here real quick, get out my tools. Uh, my tools, as usual, are a very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them down in the um, description there. I've already got the T8 out, okay? Um, here's the nice thing about an, uh, an Integral. So the Pivot's T8, by the way. This is a T8 bit, I didn't show that. Uh, there we go. There is no necessary, really necessary disassembly. I mean, you can remove the pocket clip. You can remove the pivot, right? Um, but that's about it. You don't have to worry about adjustment heads on the body or anything like that. It's nice. Um, so I showed this knife uh, on the unboxing. Let me show you this real quick. You can, you can get my flashlight down in the description as well. And when I unboxed it, people looked real close and they looked right here. You see that right there? They said, oh my gosh, the titanium frame's cracked. Well, that's not good. Actually, where else are you guys seeing a line? You looking up here? It's like a swoop. Perfectly machined swoop. That is not a crack. That looks like a piece of the frame that's designed to, or it was probably, maybe it was press fitted in there afterwards. Maybe they, they, that's how they get the pivot collar to stay or it has something to do with the bearings. I dug for the information on that, but this is definitely not a crack. You can't see this one over here, but there's a seam on this side too. And then this line up here, can you, can you see that? Uh, yeah, that's way too perfect to be a, um, to be a crack. It's not a crack. Um, I actually had somebody send me a picture of theirs uh, from uh, Discord. No, it was on Instagram. Same thing. Uh, it's way too it was in exactly the same place. I think the way that they construct this, so they way the way that they get the, the design to work is that there's a piece of titanium that's um, designed to fit exactly in this space around the pivot that has something to do with housing the internals or fitting them when they're putting the knife together. 
Um, so that's what that is. If you see that on yours, uh, don't worry about it. As far as exactly what it's doing, I don't know. I watched an interview with the designer. They didn't talk about it, right? I, I have no idea. Um, but uh, yeah, it doesn't appear that that's, um, I mean, it, it, all the information that I dug up, I didn't find a single report of there actually being an issue, right? It was more so just consistency and me seeing this on the, on the pivot. Uh, and, um, you know, it looked exactly the same in the other picture that I saw. So anyways, um, what, uh, what were we talking about? Oh, uh, we talked about action. We talked about the, um, um, the hardware here. And by the way, all of the screws on this are T6, not, or I'm sorry, T8, not that you'd need to, you know, really the only thing you're ever going to need to do is adjust the pivot, unless you really need to take the blade out, in which case, what I found is that this screw will come out, I have no idea how to get the, the pivot collar out, um, so I, I imagine there's a way, perhaps it's just really tightly fitted in there, um, but I could not find any information on di actually disassembling this completely. So if anybody has any information about that, that would be really helpful. And I will make sure and link it in the description so that more people can figure that out. But for the most part, this isn't really a knife that you're going to have to disassemble. Even with knives with bearings, most of the time you can blow this out with compressed air. You can then, you know, make the adjustment that you need to uh, with the pivot screw, which is the T8. So that's fine. Really happy with that. I love uh, integral knives. Um, I love uh, just the, um, you know, the whole lack of needing to disassemble it, right? Or there even being a way. I just, it's so simple. There's so few parts on this guy. I just really like it. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the anatomy here. We have beautiful 3D milling going on right here. These lines, I love this, this subtle texturing. It's very nice to the touch. It's not aggressive in and out of the pocket. It's really not going to be a problem. Uh, the anodizing pattern is interesting. Kind of looks like tadpoles to me. Um, okay. There's a lot of different versions of this. If you want to pick up just a plain stonewashed version, you can do that. All of the versions of this knife will be listed right down below. So you can check them out if you want to. The blade is a uh, Tanto style blade um, with this uh, compound hollow and just a slight flat up here. Very aggressive looking. You can also get a trailing point blade. They also make a Damasteel version of this, right? They make a satin finish, so if you don't like this rough subdued look, right? Lots of different versions. Look at this shouldering back here. Super deep shouldering wrapping around that pivot collar. I'm sorry, that uh, stop pin. Uh, the spine on this is crowned all the way down. That's a nice touch. I really appreciate that. What's the steel? M390. Who's the designer? Jim O. Young. If I, I hope I'm getting that correct. Uh, but uh, yeah, fantastic. As far as I know, we does a good job with their M390. We have a flat that carries out about 50% the length of the blade um, and then a reasonable amount of thickness out here towards the tip. Tanto is traditionally a pretty strong blade shape. Love the swedge up here, right? It's, kind of, it's almost like a trailing point tail or Persian Tanto, I guess. There's some belly in the blade. It's not completely straight. It does come down to a super thin cutting edge. Very, very thin. Edge is done nicely, right? If you're a fan of the Persian style blade or you're a fan of Tantos, I think that's going to be a really appealing blade shape for you. Nothing else on the blade except for the designer's logo, which is fine with me. Pivot looks great. I like how Wii puts their logo on the pivot and then leaves the other side as an adjustment head. There's a lanyard hole back here if you want to use a lanyard, but that's fine because it's not being prioritized over the pocket clip. The pocket clip is odd. It looks like a spoon. It's odd looking, but honestly, it does not create a hot spot. The biggest hot spot on this knife is right under here underneath the jimping, right? If you're really going to be bearing down on this, that's the part that you're going to feel. Other than that, it's pretty darn good. The contouring is very interesting. We have this rise in the body and then this fall right here. I can't say that I'm... The, the, the swell there, I can't say that it makes that much of a difference to me, but it is nice. It's very, very comfortable to hang on to, and the pocket clip does not create a hot spot. I suppose that little divot in the pocket clip might make it easy to pull out, right? There is a ramp, so it should rise readily to meet uh, most pocket seam thicknesses, so that's fine. It's just weird looking. It just looks like a spoon. But okay, it carries well, it's functional, it's not a hot spot, I really can't complain too much. I like it when they do interesting things on the relief cut instead of just making it, you know, like Rick Hinderer mills it, right? But it's just one continuous cutout. This has got three separate cutouts here, and it kind of looks cool. I like that. The relief cut is to allow the uh, lock bar to be able to move out of the way. So the, 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 the tension would just be ridiculous if this was all, you know, the same thickness and there was no relief cut. So that's kind of neat. I like that they continue the, um, the 3D milling onto the steel lock bar insert. Um, I guess is that entire thing the lock bar 
yeah, let me look in here. I thought maybe it was just different for... Yeah, that whole thing is the lock bar. <laughs> so that's cool. I, I think I, I like how it looks, right? That lock bar does, uh, or that insert does double as the over travel stop. Um, so that's great. Uh, this blade is centered. And we are locking up completely and totally solid. Um, that's great. There's not a whole lot to complain about here. It's just, it's going to be a little heavy for some people. This jimping up here, I think, is a little bit aggressive in this zone. Not bad. Uh, you have to like, in this case, you have to like a Tanto. But if you don't like a Tanto, you can go with the trailing point. Either way, it looks like it's going to have that kind of swoop up there. Some people like it, some people don't. I wish I knew what the heck this area was up here. I really do. I tried, guys. I do not know what that piece is and how wh why it seems like there's a removable piece of titanium here, but it is not a crack. Um, I was concerned with that too until I noticed that other part. I don't know why I'm showing using the flashlight on this guy. This is cool. Uh, the clip the clip looks weird to me. I think this whole the whole design from this point of view would have been a lot more appealing if the clip was something different, but I really can't complain too much because it's it's functional. I also am really appreciative of how thin it is behind the edge up here. That's really, really cool. Um, I like that you have a lot of choices, right? There's not a lot to complain about. This is a really well-designed uh, integral knife. Aesthetically, the flow of the lines is not really my thing, but I can't deny that everything makes sense. This is a fully functional and usable blade. I think anybody who picks this up and actually plans to use it is going to be really happy with it. Like I kind of said at the beginning, the best part about this is the price. This is a full 3D milled titanium integral knife using premium materials from a company who has excellent consistency in their fit and finish and excellent consistency with their heat treats no matter what the steel is. This is a $330 knife at base. That's a lot of money. Um, but, uh, considering what goes into knives like this, and again, it, it costs money to be consistent with stuff like that, to have the pieces fit consistently. On top of that, it costs extra money to make it integral, and then the heat treat it correctly. I have everything come out and not have anything mess up consistently. That costs a lot of money, right? It doesn't matter if you can get M390 and titanium from some other company for 150 bucks. It doesn't matter. That's, that, I mean, if that's what, if that's where your system of value lies, then go buy that one, right? This factually costs more money. And because of that, right, considering all of those elements, that's a good deal for an integral. But you have to be in the market for an, for an integral or integral knife. You have, you have to be. That has to be of value to you. Um, this is going to go on my recommended knives playlist because those are, uh, those are things that I, you know, understand at least on the, from a surface level, right? Uh, I understand the, the extra that goes into it. Um, I've had a lot of things to compare to, and believe me, I've handled some absolutely junk titanium frame locks using M390 and a few junk integrals that cost less money. This is really good. Really good. If you're in the market for an integral, this is money well spent, I think. These aren't made in China. People have different feelings about that, right? If you're against that, then don't buy it. If it doesn't bother you, it's available to buy. You can make your own choice there. I will link these in the description for people who are interested, but this will definitely be going on my recommended knives playlist because it is an excellent, excellent product. I'm really, I wish we saw a lot more integrals around the $350 mark because believe me, I would spend money on them. I just need to see a design that speaks to me personally. But if this speaks to you aesthetically, then I think you're gonna be really, Really happy with that. Somebody jumped down my throat about the way that I pronounced uh, aesthetically. He was like, <laughs> it was on Instagram. He was like, the way that you pronounce that, aesthetically. He was like, it's aesthetically. Aesthetically. Shut up. <laughs> I don't care. Oh man, I'm so, I'm being so condescending in this review. Um, I really like the Wii Synergy too. I'm just trying to make you guys laugh. All right, that's going to be pretty much it. Um, Tom, thank you so much for sending this. This is really cool. It's Tom, Tom sent me another knife uh, for review, so that'll be coming up too. Uh, guys, that's going to be pretty much it. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal underscore Complex. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.